For a while now, I've had my eyes on the newly updated Tesla Model 3. Tesla took a lot of what made the Model S and X refresh great and put it into the great Model 3 package, but it has been a long time coming after they launched it in Shanghai last year. Finally, this year, Tesla announced this car in the US and I just took delivery, so let's get into it. On January 9th, Tesla quietly launched the new Model 3 on their website, so I immediately put my order in for a rear-wheel drive model with stock wheels, but in their new darker ultra-red color. Just under a month later, it was time to take delivery. I originally thought I could get it as early as the end of January, but the timeline kept getting pushed back through the app. I filled out everything there and went through the standard process, which means that the first human being I spoke to in regards to my vehicle purchase was my delivery advisor at Pickup. In the app ahead of time, you do details for registration, trade-in, and financing. Then when it's time, you schedule your delivery appointment, show proof of insurance, make your final payment, and complete agreements the day of, all from the app. So I showed up to my 11 a.m. appointment with all of that done, saw them detailing the car out in the delivery area, and I signed a form. Then a delivery advisor took me out to show me around the car, let me look all around and inside, and then I proceeded to click accept in the Tesla app. In the past, I've experienced this less hands-on and more hands-on. I really think it depends on Tesla's demand at the time of the delivery and how busy they are. After that, Tesla welcomes you to the family and the car is good to drive off the lot. This location had a Cybertruck on display along with a stealth gray Model 3 refresh, so it was cool to see the latest vehicles, but it was even more cool to drive off with my very own brand new 2024 Model 3. Let's take it for a drive and then walk through everything else. The first weird thing is that it's a Model 3, but you shift on screen like you do in a Model S, X, and now Cybertruck. So there we go. Let's go for a drive. It's my first drive in the Highland Model 3, the refresh. Already feels like a great Model 3, of course, but it feels a little smoother. Here, I'm just gonna pull in here. I almost went for blinkers there, but they're on the steering wheel. I'm currently used to a 2022 Model Y so the suspension here feels a lot smoother. You can notice on the wheel, everything feels great, but there's these like divots here that I haven't seen before. Um, and then the, they're like touch buttons, but they actually have feedback. You can tell that we're straight off the lot here because it says calibration and process for autopilot. And it still has a decent amount of calibration that it has to do. Launch right here. Definitely still a real, real drive launch, but very good. The screen is basically the same. It's technically a little bit bigger than the prior Model 3 screen, and you can tell by the bezel size, but in my actual experience, I'm not looking at this going, wow, this is much better and much bigger. It's just a little nicer feeling that the bezels are a bit smaller. Special thanks to Jonas at the West Covina Tesla Service Center for helping us out. He was super nice, and they really cleaned up this whole car for me and they had the bow on it, which I've never had before picking up a Tesla, and just a really great experience overall. It seemed like it was almost kind of special because this is one of the first Highland Model 3s, and I didn't have any sort of priority other than I ordered right away when this went live. Funny thing there as well is I always tell you guys to order with my referral link or order with anybody's referral link so that you get whatever benefits there are there, and I forgot to order with a referral link, so I don't have a free trial of FSD right now or anything. The fact that this is a base model is always amazing. There's other base model electric cars that have like, you know, a little bit of power and they feel a little bit good to drive, but this is just pretty amazing. Like this feels better than most gas cars right off the bat. Yeah, everything here is super smooth, really planted. I am curious because this calibration is taking <laughs> a very long time for autopilot. Is there something I can do? Maybe I need to go on the freeway. One thing that's already better is it feels smoother, but then it's much quieter than most Model 3s that I've ever driven in here. And that is very purposeful on Tesla's part. They added the double layered glass and everything all around this thing. And so it's much quieter inside the cabin. But for me, the real test is once you're getting like above 70 miles per hour on the freeway. So again, just fantastic speed and pickup and instant torque and everything. Definitely can hear some road noise a little bit of wind over here but not much and this is a really great drive this is up there with how good it feels driving a model s like a current model s with air suspension obviously this is a lighter car so that's going to make a big difference but i'm really impressed and now the calibration has jumped up so i think we did just need to get on the freeway 
since that really is where autopilot's gonna be used. The blinker buttons in this kind of scenario, I really like. It's really easy when you're just making small movements and you don't have to move your hand at all and you signal as opposed to reaching over for a stock. This is a scenario it's really great in, but this doesn't have steer by wire or anything. So if you're in the middle of a turn and you need to make another turn and you need to signal, it's a little awkward that your control is now over here or something. So the other thing I'll have to get used to from my Tesla Model Y is that autopilot is controlled like it is on a Model S, X, or Cybertruck with the scroll wheel. So if I press this scroll wheel, that is what engages autopilot. Versus in a Model Y currently, that is your voice command button. But now I have a voice command button right here. Also the addition of this camera button, which is pretty cool. It's like my camera button's just right here in the dock, but having it right here is just another place I don't have to reach. Another really premium upgrade in this is the cooled seats. So if I click here, I choose between cool or heated. And I'm gonna give these a go right now. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> the cooled seats are lovely. To me, that's always been something lacking in these cars. And they've put it even on the base model. Maybe eventually they'll charge a software upgrade or something to be able to get the cooled seats. But for now, the base model has cooled seats just like the premium cars that they sell. Oh, and then I can customize the LED lights in settings. Yeah, red to match right now, or you can just go center and have them be white. I think at night is when that's really gonna shine. My first impressions of a first drive with this are that it's built incredibly well, and the ride quality is very good, and it's basically got as much speed as most customers are gonna need. So this is a great base model car. This is a great Model 3 and a really good upgrade for Tesla. It's small enough to where it's still very much a Model 3 in here. Like I was saying, if I look up, it's like, oh yeah, this is a Model 3, this is the same. But everything that they've added to the core and just to your immediate experience makes it feel really premium and really great. Calibration is complete, so clicking into autopilot. The feedback on the scroll wheels is actually better than the Model Y wheel. It's just overall a really nice wheel. All the buttons feel really good and the feedback on the scroll wheels is really nice. So let's try clicking right and left. Oh, it does adjust following distance. Okay, that's great because in the Model S, at least when I had it, you then had to go into settings and go to autopilot and adjust your following distance that way. But here you can do it from the scroll wheel, just the same. And then if I wanna disengage autopilot, click the scroll wheel and I'm out of it. Obviously I can also press the brake to disengage autopilot. There's a number of changes of note in the new Model 3. So first is just up front. You have your all new tail lights. They've gotten rid of fog lamps. The hood is a bit of a different shape and it really just has a totally different stance that kind of makes it look like it is a Model S Junior or something like that. Opening up the front here, we can see it's pretty much the same as before, but the one difference is your washer fluid refill is down here, which is just, you know, a little bit more convenient than it was. Still fully manual open and close. These are the standard 18 inch photon wheels, and this is an aero cover for aerodynamics, but you can take it off and see what the wheel's like underneath. These actually look really great, and I'm sure Tesla will sell some caps for this as well, as well as third parties making other covers that fit. There's already some rust inside here on day one. One thing you'll notice with this compared to the old Model 3 is it just opens and closes softer, and it's more solid than it was before. And part of what probably locks it in more once it's actually closed for reduced driving noise is this hook that you can see inside. The door close never fully comes through on camera, but it's a very nice thud. And a lot of this is kind of a mixture of the Model S and the Model 3. These buttons pretty much feel like the Model 3 has for a while, but all of this material feels really nice and premium and everything. Then we have that LED light bar that is fully customizable. It's currently blue, but I can go into light settings here, change it to anything I want. And this really shines at night. I was driving this during the day and I drove under a dark bridge and I immediately felt this kind of immersive experience with the LED light bar. And I think that's a really good addition that's just very small, but actually really makes a difference for the premium feel of the interior. Of course, the screen is what we're used to, but it has a little bit smaller bezels than before, so it is a tad bit larger. And then down here, wireless charger. And then we have the center console. This slides in two parts. This goes forward and this goes back. And then there's even depth down here that I'm sure is gonna be an accessory, a drawer that you can slide in here. And then you have your cup holders here, as well as a 12 volt plug inside. The center console armrest opens up and then it magnets shut. 
And then the seats you'll notice are perforated and that's because the Model 3 refresh has cooled and heated seats and that's a first for the Model 3 or Y. One other thing that magnet closes is the glove box and you can really feel this one. It opens softly and then snaps closed. Comfort is definitely improved in these seats over the previous Model 3 for rear passengers, but I will say I'm almost hitting the glass and I'm 5 foot 10. So depending on how tall you are, that may be an issue and there's no reclining or adjusting of these seats. One difference is there is actually a headrest for the center seat and then this folds down obviously and has cup holders, but I have noticed it doesn't really like settle down. I guess I would be putting my weight on it, but it's kind of like that's where it should be, but it's always kind of coming back up on me. This rear screen is new for the Model 3 and allows you to adjust climate back here. You can also do seat settings, meaning heated seats for the right and left seat, no center heated seat. And then you can also move the passenger seat forward or backward if needed. Music controls, streaming, gaming, which is also something that is fairly new in software even for the Model S and X, as well as Bluetooth where you can sync a Bluetooth device for this screen. Or you could wear your Apple Vision Pro in the back seat if you don't want to look down at this screen. I will say, compared to the Model S and X or the Cybertruck, this is pretty small. It's not a giant screen. And I think actually any iPad, even an iPad mini, is bigger than this. So as a kid, it's cool, but likely a lot of kids are going to use their iPad or you know their Apple Vision Pro or whatever. Of course, these are the vents. This is where the AC is coming from. And then down here are two USB-C ports. And over here, you'll see there is a new back seat pocket. This is a bit more usable than it was in the past. One of the final changes you'll notice is on the back side of this, or actually the front side, there's a speaker grill for an additional speaker. And I'm not even sure if that's activated in this car because this has a downgraded sound system, but the speaker grill is there. Overall, the standard range Model 3 is very similar to the long range Model 3 from the interior and exterior, but two places you notice the difference are going to obviously be your range and then the sound system. The sound system is entirely upgraded in the new Model 3 and it has a lot of speakers and it's reviewed to be incredibly good, but this is the standard range which is downgraded from that and you can definitely notice it. Around back, rather than a Tesla logo, it spells out the word Tesla and then obviously these taillights are a bit different and they travel with the trunk when you open it. On the back inside of the trunk, this is all carpeted now and this used to be plastic in the past and you would just kind of get scuffs immediately. And then the other thing is when this is up, since your taillights are not here, if you have your flashers on, they are still indicated down here. One improvement for the Model 3's trunk is that you have two side cubbies and that matches the Model Y. Previously, the Model 3 only had one side cubby and so that just gives you some more space. And then of course you have your under storage compartment. So this is the 2024 Tesla Model 3 refresh, and this is coming out of Tesla's US factory. In some ways, it feels exactly like the Model 3 has felt for years, which is a good thing. And in other ways, they've upgraded all of these little things that really add up to make it a really impressive package. I think that this is going to set the standard for electric cars going forward. This is a standard range base model from Tesla, and I'm excited to see what competition comes as a result of this new Model 3. Be on the lookout for my full review in the coming weeks. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.